It's wonderful the way the Lord works, you know. It had been a rough ride from a got saved. It hadn't definitely haven't been easy, but it was been blessed. Times you'd be invited to a church and you'd preach, this, preach two messages in the one night, the first and the last, because they didn't want to hear the word of God. They didn't want to break the mold. But whenever God speaks something in your spirit, I'm not saying anything about people's mind and how they hear God through the mind. That may be how they work. But I know whenever God speaks in my spirit, there's no devil out of hell will change that. That's planted there. No devil will dilute it. Remember after going back again, after I got saved and one night and I was driving very sensible and I'm a real law abiding citizen tonight. And I got caught up in an accident, not my fault, but I got caught up in an accident. A young man was killed. And I thought this this is the worst ever happened. And a few weeks later, a very rare time it happened, but I had the house to myself. And I was up in the bedroom and I was sitting on my putty pot having a putty party. And I could see nothing. I could see no way forward. This was just the end of everything. Just back to the, the work, the drink, the sleep. That's just the way my mind was that night. And this is when I really learned to know the voice of God. Because I was having that putty party, the front door got knocked and went down the stairs to answer, nobody there, and out on the street, nobody about. Still don't know who knocked that door. But I went back up to the bedroom with intention just continuing on with my putty party. And I heard the voice of God deep down in my spirit. I believe if something serious enough will hear spirit to spirit. God spoke a chorus to me that night. I didn't, uh, didn't know it was a chorus. I never heard it before. Just reading on uh, Denise's newsletter there. But God gave a horror chorus that she never heard before. Well, this happened to me back. I don't know what year it was. But the words that the Lord spoke unto my spirit that night was, I've made a way through the mountain. I've made a way through the sea. In desert lands I've placed fountains. I've made a way for you. And I said, Lord, I don't doubt that, but I can't see it. He told me people to go to visit. They had been praying much that day, and the woman was almost blind. He said, I want you to go visit them people. Lay your hands on her that she'll receive her sight. And whenever you're there, tell her I don't want her to ridicule my people anymore. That's what I heard in my spirit. So I got myself tidied up, headed to this house. This was a man that had been preaching the gospel for years and years. A part of the gospel for years and years. Pulled up at the house and he met me. He was out before I got out of the car, he was out and opened the door. He said, what kept you? I've been waiting for you all night. And I said, well, I'm running late and I'm not stopping. I just went in and said to him, I'm going to lay hands on your wife. He said, that's what we've been praying for. And I said, sister, before I lay my hands on you, God said you're to stop ridiculing God's people. <coughs> and I left hands on her. And she received her sight. See, there's times we want to have our putty party, but God wants to send us somewhere. God wants to send us out. God wants us to give us that bit of practice in his presence, knowing his power, knowing his liberty. I could talk from now to this time tomorrow night, and I wouldn't have touched the edge of what has happened since I got saved. 